So good morning, everybody. I think that uh, we are uh, ready and uh, welcome to this uh, virtual, unfortunately, final event of our uh, course project. I am um, Anna Chiara Stefanucci. I have been uh, following this project oh, since the very start uh, in uh, 2018. And uh, I'm really happy to have you all here uh, and um, first let me thank all uh, the attendees that are following us. I know that uh, one hour before uh, the start of this event, we had uh, up to 96 uh, attendees uh, were uh, uh, registered. Uh, and I would like to thank uh, Programma Sviluppo for uh, the technical organization and the support uh, for the organization of, uh, of this event. And uh, special thanks uh, among our attendees also to the academic staff and students from uh, ETS Logistica Puglia and all the students who are, who are following us from uh, the maritime uh, faculty of, uh, of Montenegro. Um, some uh, instructions for uh, people who are attending us, uh, their uh, microphones, of course, uh, are switched off uh, as well as uh, their videos. But uh, there is a, a Q&A chat where they can leave any comment, any question that will be collected by our uh, uh, control room, our uh, technical uh, support, and uh, we will have then the chance uh, uh, to ask these questions uh, to the speakers and the panelists uh, of our day. Uh, some uh, information regarding uh, this, uh, this agenda. Mm, we have an agenda that is uh, divided in uh, three parts. We will have uh, some uh, opening uh, remarks, welcome speeches uh, given by the president of ETS Logistica Puglia, Mr. Silvio Busico, and the managing authority, Mr. Antonio Marino Crescenzo. Afterwards, we will have a thematic session. We will try to investigate the impacts of uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, on uh, ports, on uh, shipping, maritime logistic and uh, transport of uh, the program area. And immediately after, we will have a focus on uh, our project, on uh, its approach, on its main uh, results and achievements, uh, as well as on, of course, uh, our outputs. Um, I think that uh, we are ready to start. I see all uh, distinguished uh, panelists uh, ready to, to talk, so I, I would uh, leave now the floor uh, to Mr. Silvio Busico, who is uh, the president uh, of uh, ETS Logistica Puglia, as I was saying before, uh, our uh, lead partner. Mr. Busico, please, the, for the floor is yours. Dear course partners, uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is with that uh, I welcome you today uh, to the final event of the Ports uh, Project Funded in the framework of the Interreg Italy Albania Montenegro program. I would like to welcome all those uh, that are following us by web streaming today, 
we regret that uh, once again, due to the COVID pandemic, we are unable to meet in person. But at the same time, by making this a virtual event, we hope that uh, many more people from the involved territories will be able to attend. Improving the cross-border dimension of the presentations that will be held today. As the president of ETS Logistica Puglia, I had the pleasure to share with the Programmas Sviluppo the Polytechnic of Bari, uh, Taranto Port Authority, the University of Montenegro and the Albania Institute of Transport, this experience of international cooperation, that so is engaged in this EAX in studying that impact of new roads and the motorways of the sea between Apulia, Montenegro, Albania, coast and day ports. Many relevant results is, uh, uh, have been achieved. Uh, we analyzed the stakeholders' needs for uh, improving cross-border accessibility and their needs in terms of public investments and the new skill required by the market. We realized an international research laboratory to study new forms of integrated transport between the ports of Taranto, Coto, and Dures. We shared the good practices and uh, produced technical contents for online webinars for improving the transfer of new skills to the maritime transport public and private operations. But most of all, we created a large and strong international network of partners and the stakeholders to promote sustainable cross-border maritime connections in the Adriatic Union area, which all further be capitalized in other projects and joint initiatives. The timing of this event of results dissemination is also excellent at a moment when we call already see results from the current programming period and are intensively preparing for the new programming period starting next year. It is with great pleasure that I now introduce Mr. Crescenzo Marino, the uh, recently appointed managing authority of the Italy-Albania-Montenegro program. So with an out further delay, I invite him to the floor to open the POTS project final event. Thank you, Mr. Busico, for uh, your uh, remarks uh, and uh, welcome uh, of uh, all the attendees and the speakers uh, to the event. And uh, of course, speaking of uh, a new programming period that is uh, about uh, to start, uh, we cannot uh, avoid to hear the words of uh, Mr. Antonio Marino Crescenzo. And uh, we really appreciate your uh, presence. We also knew that uh, this is one of the first uh, events you take part. So it's a great pleasure for us to have uh, you here with us. Uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Stefanucci. I know that it is difficult, but I have two names, uh, Crescenzo and Antonio, and Marino is my name. But uh, it's frequently that uh, some mistakes in my name and his name. Uh, so uh, I would like um, uh, to warmly thank you for the invitation to this event. In particular, I'd like to thank uh, the lead partner of the Ports Project, uh, the representatives of the Fondazione ITS per la Mobilità Sostenibile, together with the other five project partners for the excellent work done with this project. As you know, since the last November, I had the direction of the managing authority of the Italy-Albania-Montenegro program. And I am really glad that my first speech matches the closing of a great project. Because closing a project means moving from objectives to results. It means reaping the benefits of a common work that has seen cooperation as a guiding thread. The Ports project is very important for the whole Italy-Albania-Montenegro problem. 
I would like to point out that this is the first project closed within the first whole standard project specific objective 4.1 that is transport. This is a sign of efficient management, good planning and collaboration between partners. Therefore, you are the ambassadors of our program on the theme of the transport under the first goal. Uh, the increase of cross-border accessibility, promoting sustainable transport service and facilities, and improving public infrastructures is one of the six specific objectives of our program. The transport system are characterized by low interoperability and it is necessary to better organize the use of existing transport infrastructures and corridors with the aim to the enhance the potential of the regions to function as hubs for tourists and trade, improving the intra and interregional connectivity. Our program also through your project is contributing to this ambitious European objective. The ports project plays a fundamental role because it meets a very concrete need of the program area. We know that the area before the implementation of ports showed no efforts to establish new motorways of the sea, a horizontal priority of the connecting European facility, the CEF, aiming to promote green, viable, attractive and efficient sea-based transport links integrated in the entire transport chain. We also know there is a high level of experience and expertise on transport and logistic measures, which can be shared among countries and regions in the program. The ports project <clears throat> managed to meet these needs and to achieve excellent results. The transnational network built, including public and private stakeholders in the field of maritime transportation, with the project area and with a particular focus on operators of Taranto, Dures and Cato ports, will certainly have a significant impact on socio-economic growth of the two main coastal area cross border systems. Successful online training webinars were organized through the project too. Uh, we are convinced that this project is a best practice due to its ability to share the knowledge and create cooperation structures which are going to work far beyond the project life. At the end of the day, the long-term impacts are what makes the real difference between a normal project and an excellent project like this one. Finally, we are pleased to note that the follow-up and the capitalization of the project are already underway through the ports 4.0 project funded under our last targeted goal. Uh, now some final remarks about the future. We know that the 2021-27 programming period priorities list the policy objective number three, a more connected Europe with digital connectivity and cross-border mobility as main goal. The same will happen in the new Interreg Italy, Albania, Montenegro program, which is being developed right now in these weeks, these months. We encourage so all partners to build on the excellent results achieved and enhance future cooperation opportunities also in the upcoming program. Well, I'm dying from my side and let me thank you again for the invitation and uh, wish uh, all of you a fruitful discussion. So thank you very much for uh, for your words uh, and uh, your remarks about uh, our uh, our projects that are making us uh, 
very proud, I must, uh, I must say. Um, and uh, I, I hope that uh, we will manage to capitalize uh, the results uh, of our project within the new programming period, and especially that uh, the results of uh, the researchers, the activities that uh, we conducted uh, will be useful also in programming uh, the new program. <laughs> Sorry for, uh, for the joke. Um, I think that uh, we are ready to move now to the thematic uh, uh, session of our, uh, of our agenda. Um, as uh, we will have the chance to understand later on uh, during uh, the discussion, our uh, um, project mainly focused in uh, uh, strengthening uh, the connections uh, and uh, uh, the links between uh, the Italian, Apulian, Montenegrin and Albanian coasts and uh, their ports in order to support the socio-economic growth of, uh, of the area. We conducted several actions and different uh, research activities to understand, uh, for example, the stakeholder needs, uh, identify uh, new routes uh, between uh, uh, Taranto, Dures and uh, Cotter ports, uh, new maritime uh, based logistic uh, chains. Uh, and we also developed uh, contents in order to enhance the skills, the capabilities of uh, the private and uh, the public operators uh, of, uh, of our ports. Uh, all these actions, uh, different in nature, targeted the same goal, uh, boosting the sustainability and the sustainable development and the full inclusion of uh, an area which is characterized anyway by, um, let's say, a, a complex accessibility. Um, we didn't take into account within our research uh, one variable, one factor that is uh, the disruption of uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic in uh, 2020. Um, we thought therefore to um, focus today on uh, the impact that uh, coronavirus uh, had for uh, maritime transport and uh, trade uh, and especially for our ports uh, in the area. Uh, why this? Uh, because uh, strengthening the capacity of ports to um, anticipate somehow and to recover from uh, uh, crisis that can be economic crisis, health crisis, it's uh, fundamental, it's, uh, it's crucial. And we would like today to understand um, what kind of actions have been put in place from our ports uh, to face these challenges, what solutions have been found, and what measures have been uh, enacted. Uh, we will do this uh, with uh, three important speakers, representatives. Uh, we are glad today to host uh, Sergio Prete, who is uh, uh, the president of uh, the Taranto Port Authority. Uh, we have then uh, Bozidar Buksic from uh, uh, the Kotor Port Authority. And uh, uh, for uh, gender equality, I'm very happy also to have uh, Serena Kovaci from uh, the Duras Port Authority. Uh, these three representatives will give us uh, their insight about the experience of uh, the three uh, ports uh, we, we are talking about. So um, I would uh, leave the floor to Mr. Sergio uh, Prete and uh, I will ask him to tell us about uh, the experience of, uh, of Taranto, highlighting uh, the impacts in um, uh, economic terms uh, of uh, the COVID-19 uh, and the challenges faced by uh, the Taranto port, but also the measures that have been uh, introduced uh, as well as uh, the lessons learned. Uh, Please, uh, Mr. Prete, the floor is yours. Okay, good morning, everybody, and thanks for the invitation. Uh, a few weeks before the current pandemic all around Europe, uh, the Italian quiz industry had celebrated uh, its record. Uh, 2019, in fact, uh, had, uh, had closed with the total passenger movements in the national port, Iger for the first time uh, to the threshold of 12 billion, 12 million of passengers. In Italy, the national ports have been investing in these last uh, decades uh, in order to make more efficient and more welcoming port facilities. Uh, this uh, infrastructural upgrade, together with a stronger promotional activity and a strong engagement of all operators, have provided for a further year a growth. 
2020, in fact, was supposed to reach and exceed 13 million passenger movement, continuing the positive growth curve of recent years. Then, as we know, the most unthinkable of exogenous factor as a pandemic has arrived and it has put in need the cruise industry, as in other market sectors. As a consequence, uh, all references uh, and all plans have been cancelled and the cruise operators have been obliged to adapt uh, to legal measures and more generally to these new emergencies. This, is, this situation uh, has affected uh, the market so much that 2020 cannot count a very limited number of passenger movements. 2020 will in fact present to the Italian port approximately 800,000 passenger movements, which can be considered nothing compared to the 13 million of forecast, a result that could have been considered a record in the last 30 years. With reference to the passenger traffic in the port of Taranto, I have to specify that uh, this is a brand new sector. The Port Network Authority has been working in, the, in this last year. Uh, the first significant result was obtained in uh, 2017, and this result decreased in uh, 2018 and has uh, reached over uh, 9,200 passengers in 2019. The current year has seen a course of stop in the passenger traffic due to the pandemic with a great negative impact in terms of number. For 2021, we have received a, a forecast for 30,000 passengers from various cruise companies, which is a record for Taranto, and we have to monitor, to control the coming month to verify is uh, uh, we can confirm this forecast or modify them again. Despite this, in 2020, we have received the application for concession by Global Port Holding, through the Italian subsiders company. Uh, the group is leader in the cruise market and it has requested the availability, uh, uh, availability of the part of our Fanato Port Center, which is a building under construction and the pier closest to the city and planned to the, be ready in April 2021. The Fanato Port Center hosts a wall area destined to be a maritime station and a greet and meet area. And this will, be, uh, this will allow Taranto to be a new destination also for Global Ports Holding Group customers. With reference to cargo traffic, the pandemic effect had a more limited impact on port traffic flow. This impact has affected mainly the time necessary for the execution of maritime works which has been deleted on all construction sites. In particular, this consequence has caused the postponement in 2021 of some activities planned to be carried out in 2020, related to the start of the terminal container. Also, the industrial sector has faced a decrease in the traffic flow, mainly due to the pandemic spread throughout the world. We can say that this pandemic has simply emphasized a negative trend due to a pre-existing local situation of the steel factory. And also for this reason, it is not simple to make uh, any forecast for the coming year. Thank you, Mr. Prete, for, uh, for your speech and uh, the overview of uh, the situation of uh, Taranto in uh, this very tough uh, year. And uh, we hope that uh, the challenges uh, uh, that uh, our ports and our economy uh, are uh, facing will be turned in uh, opportunities uh, and uh, in lessons learned for, uh, for the future. 
Um, I would uh, leave the floor to Mrs. Kovaci uh, from uh, the port of uh, Dures also to get their insight from uh, the Albanian uh, point of, uh, of view regarding uh, the impacts uh, of uh, the COVID-19 uh, disruption. Please, Mrs. Kovaci, same question uh, to you. What have been uh, the impacts, the measures and uh, lessons learned from uh, the Albanian coast? The floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with uh, you all. And especially because with the uh, Albanian transport institution, we have a very good collaboration during this year. So it's a pleasure to, to give our contribution about your project. Um, if uh, we, I can say something about the impact of COVID-19 for the port of Duras in economic and traffic terms, I can say that uh, even though the period between March and June was very difficult in terms of throughput, we are very happy with the growth of the first uh, third quarter of the year and foresee a very solid end of the year. Overall, I would say that the port of Duras has managed to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. Uh, if I uh, refer to the traffic figures of goods and ships for the last three years, the port of Duras has had an average increase of 12% of the volume of import-export. And if we compare this with the 10, month, uh, 10 months of 2020, with the same period of uh, 2019, we have a decrease in export about uh, 20%, while in import only in 2%. About the traffic passenger, I can say that uh, the line that is more common in our port is the port of Bari, which it has about uh, 800,000 800, uh, passengers uh, per year. And now it's reduced because only the drivers and the lorries can, uh, can travel. However, given the situation created by the pandemic during November and December, we see a small increase. And given the decline in proceeded volume and reduction of cargo relating assets, as a result of the COVID pandemic, we have led to, to a slight decrease uh, in total revenues. If I can mention the measures that we have undertaken by uh, our port to face the COVID-19, I can say that uh, our stability was tested and all the ports were very conscious that this virus uh, were here to stay for some time. And therefore, we will need to adapt not only our working methods, but the most importantly, our operations, service offer and client management. The administration of our course started working remotely while the operational staff was providing with the necessary anti-COVID tools according to the protocols. Our important as the safety and security provider was highlighted. Example that Port of Duras was involved in the national COVID-19 prevention and task force. Uh, when uh, the lockdown started, as we all know, uh, for our port, the logistical offer was also tested and we started questioning our regional strategy and revenue basis. Uh, but we can see we are happy that the COVID-19 did not bring a reduction in the number of employees of our ports. And uh, I can say some of the lessons that we learned and the implication of, for the maritime traffic and supply chain for the future. We learned that ports that are not able to integrate their logistic offer in the international supply chain cannot step into the regional market potential. In the case of Adriatic Union ports, this translates into a need to become regional hubs. Otherwise, they will become irrelevant. The second challenge regards the digital and energy transition of our ports. For over two decades, now ports in all over Europe have been investing on automatization, in digitalization and in e-solutions. The COVID-19 pandemic centrally confirms us the need, but it remains challenging for all ports to build a sustainable revenue stream out of e-solutions. The same applies for the energy transition and green investment. So this is from our, our side. Thank you, Mrs. Kovaci. It was uh, very interesting. And I think that uh, the portrait that you just gave uh, is uh, the story of another resilient port, uh, let's, let's say, 
uh, and uh, thank you also for uh, the lessons you highlighted. Uh, I mean, uh, digitalization, international cooperation, uh, these are uh, some of uh, the main uh, topics that um, also our, uh, our project uh, highlighted uh, as added values for, uh, uh, for our um, uh, logistic chains and uh, maritime uh, transport in the in the program area. So thank you very much, Mrs. Kovaci, and uh, we would now uh, go to the third story. Let's say the third experience uh, that uh, will be provided by Mr. Bosidar Buksic from uh, the port of uh, Kotor. Thank you for uh, for being with us. Uh, I would uh, leave you the floor, uh, please, Mr. Buksic. Thank you. Hello to everyone. My name is Božidar and I will speak in front of Port of Kotor today. So, as you know, Port of Kotor is passenger port and uh, accept only cruise ships, which have been forbidden for the almost beginning of the year. The Port of Kotor is a very significant port and it has very difficult business environment due to epidemiological situation. Since the beginning of the year, the only 2% of the planned income was, was realized. This outcome has put, put us in the condition of difficult and close our business. We try now to maintain business liquidity. The cruising industry was one of the most affected sectors of the tourism industry in our country during the COVID-19 pandemic. The consequences of discontinuation of activities for almost whole year are reflected in difficult economy situation of all participants and cruise market is having questioned sustainability of our business. For this year, it can be planned 560 ships to visit our port. This should have income around 4.6 billion of euros, but only nine ships have arrived to our port with 1,600 passengers from the beginning of the year. The planned, the planned investments were construction of pylons, reconstruction of marina and area in the contact zone of our ports. In this year, in which losses were expected, the planned investments were not possible. However, we will receive credit funds that will enable us an easier return to cruise market. Port of Kotor have received approval from Ministry of Transport and Maritime Affairs of Montenegro for the staying of passenger ships and their crews during the COVID-19 pandemic. The rights of residents and accommodation of mentioned vessels will be exercised according to the procedures prescribed by the Ministry of Maritime Affairs of Montenegro. Interested agents, owners, and also the shipping companies are informed of this opportunity. The informations are available on our internet site. I think that we should have also prepared in advance for this situation and have a team of people like risk management that will coordinate in this situation in the future. We should learn to appreciate more human life and our health because that's only valuable. That's all from me. Thank you, Mr. Vuksic, also for, um, for your insight. And uh, thank you all uh, the speakers for uh, these remarkable uh, uh, words uh, for uh, their uh, for telling us uh, their uh, their experience. As I was saying uh, before, uh, uh, we understood that uh, uh, there are plenty of uh, challenges that have been 
faced by our uh, ports, uh, but uh, also opportunities that uh, have been uh, grasped uh, some, uh, somehow uh, through uh, innovative solutions that have been found uh, during uh, these months uh, uh, to respond to the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. And uh, some of these solutions uh, rely on, uh, as we were saying, uh, international cooperation, some others on uh, digitalization, on uh, also evidence-based uh, responses and uh, uh, talking about evidence-based responses on uh, assessment, on uh, research, uh, I think the time is uh, ready for uh, moving uh, to the next uh, uh, session uh, of, um, of our agenda that relates uh, to, to our uh, project. Uh, before uh, leaving uh, the floor to Paolo Lopolito, who will be moderating this session. I would like to inform uh, everybody that uh, we are completely sold out. Uh, we overcame uh, the number of 100 attendees that were expected for, uh, for this event, but uh, uh, there is also a Facebook uh, streaming, uh, both uh, from uh, um, ITS Logistica Puglia and from Programma Sviluppo uh, pages uh, that uh, can, uh, can be followed. And, uh, uh, I also know that among the attendees, uh, there is uh, Mr. Nicolo Bergins uh, from uh, Alice, that is the Italian Association for uh, Logistics, so he's following us. I don't know if technically we can uh, leave him the room for a, a brief uh, remark afterwards. Later on, we will... Um, we will uh, deepen uh, this technical issue, but in the meantime, I would uh, I would like to uh, to greet him uh, uh, publicly. So I would uh, leave the floor to uh, to Paolo. Uh, meantime, I have a message from uh, Mrs. Kovacs, who is uh, leaving us. Uh, thank you once again for uh, for being with us. Uh, and uh, we now move uh, to next session. So please, Paolo, mm, the floor is yours. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Anna Chiara. Good morning, everyone. The aim of the second part of this final event is to have a picture of the whole implementation of the single activities, activities that we um, underwent you know, during, uh, during this uh, pro project force life cycle. In order to do that, we have today the pleasure to meet a representative of uh, each partner that contributed to the success of Project Ports. Uh, and uh, as correctly stated by my colleague, Anna Chiara, uh, Ports aimed at, the at straightening the Apulia, uh, Apulian ceilings with the Montenegrin and Albanian uh, coasts in order to support the socio-economic growth of the two main coastal zone, uh, the coastal zone border system. Uh, in order to do this, the partnership, of course, took joint action in order to analyze the actual state of art uh, in the involved regions and to foresee future scenarios uh, for stimulating the economic growth uh, of the program area. Uh, the outcomes of the project have been collected and organized in three tangible outputs. Uh, and uh, I would like to start this chat uh, with Mr. Fulvio Lino Di Blasio, which is the Secretary General of the Port Authority, Fort Network Authority of the Union Sea. Um, I personally thank Mr. De Blasio for being here, especially because uh, we stole him from another important meeting, so we are going to be short and practical. So, uh, Mr. De Blasio, I don't know if you can hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. I don't know if my camera is working. Because, uh, no, uh, it's switched off. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not it's switched on, but uh, it's black. No, don't worry. Uh, so can, sorry, can but I you. cannot... Uh... We can hear a lot of clear. Thank you for, yes. for being here. Yeah, like, like the radio broadcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the show must, must go on. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Biblas, so I was telling that uh, Project Ports, of course, uh, envisages an activity of capacity building that uh, is useful for preparing port uh, operators and stakeholders to future scenarios. So in this context, uh, which are the new skills that the project output wants to transfer to its webinars? The floor is yours, please. Yes. Thank you, thank you for for the for the for involving, of course, uh, us, but specific in in uh, this specific question. Um, I know that. Um, sorry, sorry, just just a moment, just a moment. I have to switch off some room. 
we are here. Okay. Um, yeah, we have concentrated our effort in uh, in terms of uh, construction of new skills in the three main areas, or better, we are, we, are, we are consider that the importance of uh, uh, managing the, the the knowledge in the areas of uh, climate change impacts on need to reduce pollution and uh, how to preserve the the environment. Of course, these are main uh, mainstream. Uh, uh, objectives that are uh, shared by the whole the EU institutions and, um, and, and countries and, and ports. But in this case, uh, what we have uh, seen uh, is that uh, the focus of, of our project ports uh, was uh, mainly in, uh, in between. Uh, I mean, in creating a kind of balance between sustainability and maritime transport. And this is why our priorities has been uh, uh, in terms of uh, capacity building, concentrating in, uh, um, in solving this problem, how we can build a good, uh, um, a good environment, a good number of skills for managing the best the transition to a stronger and more circular economy within our ports. And this is why we have uh, uh, dedicated a special uh, work package uh, called the good practices and training where we have uh, I repeat tried to 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 create a, a good um, balance between sustainability and maritime transport um, in, in these activities that that has been done by our port authority in cooperation with the programma sviluppo and of course with as a trainer, all the other partners of the project, we have tried to identify uh, and share good practices within our project network, but uh, also to create a, a, real, a, a course with many modules on green ports, sustainability, safety, and security. Uh, for us, it has been a, a good um, uh, occasion to implement our port strategy that, uh, as you may know, is focused on uh, a port uh, 6.0 model that is a, is a model of a uh, uh, port of the future that we have implemented in, the, in these years uh, together with the um, uh, in, in SRM that is a center of studies in uh, uh, the maritime sector of the Intesa San Paolo Bank. And uh, within this model, there are some key words like uh, internationalization, intermodality, innovation and startup, free zone and territorial marketing, but sustainability and grid port is uh, the other pillar. And for this reason, uh, we have uh, uh, accepted and uh, developed with enthusiasm these, these uh, courses. The structure of the webinars that we have developed with all the other partners are uh, that we have two main pillars. First of all, the green ports, and secondly, the safety and security pillar. The green ports pillar um, uh, is composed by one course that has been done by the Albanian Institute of Transport called Energy Efficiency and, uh, and Planning. Uh, where the, the, the issue of the energy efficiency of the importance of uh, the planning activity that is important in general, but especially in this, uh, um, in this, uh, in this area of a green ports is, is crucial. Second part of pillar one is um, the waste management system in the port of Taranto, where with our colleagues, we had the chance to share with you how we are facing uh, in general, the circular economy objective or the, the green port uh, transition, but in specific, uh, uh, how we plan and manage the waste uh, in uh, our port. The second pillar is uh, dedicated to safety and security. And in this case, we have uh, three courses. First of all, the port facility security plan uh, with a focus specific on Cotor, Dures and, and Taranto made by ETS uh, Logistica Puglia. The second is a mathematic model of ports project. It's done by the Polytechnic of, of Bari. Uh, this is a, a very important tool that has been developed and um, that has involved a lot of cooperation with, within, within us. 
and uh, EU regulation and international agreement in port safety domains by the University of Montenegro. So these are how we have uh, uh, realized, uh, I mean, our target that was uh, really challenging because it was not uh, um, easy to create something that is useful and dedicated for our target that were port operators and, uh, and stakeholders, were not just students or people interested in, the, in this area, but it was a, no, the, the challenge was how to give an added value to these people already engaged in port activities. Um, now we, we, we have a, a, a video that can summarize uh, the, these training modules of the webinar. So I, I kindly ask Marco to share the screen uh, about this training. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. De Blasio. I ask my colleagues to... Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Iblasso. Thank you, Marco, for the brief uh, showcase of the videos. And uh, as I said before, the videos will be disseminated in uh, two precise ways. The first is through the general purpose uh, video platform like uh, YouTube, and uh, but also through the, um, an online training platform that will give uh, professors and other experts the possibility to integrate other interactive learning tools. And uh, we chose to do that in order, based on the uh, learning experience that we developed in this, uh, in this very same year, in order to have uh, learning processes also online in an efficient way. So thank you uh, one more time, Mr. Di Blasio, for your intervention and the time that you dedicated to yeah, this meeting. Uh, and well, so the skills taken into consideration for the webinars came from a comprehensive analysis of the current situation in the involved port of the program oh, area. Yeah. Uh, in order to do that, uh, Project Ports started its work from the realization of uh, a needs analysis for cross-border accessibility. And uh, we talk about this first work package with Mr. Florian Xelilai, uh, together with, with Professor Shkalkim Javori from the Albanian Institute on Transport. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Sh uh, Shkalkim. Good morning, Florian. Good uh, morning, Paolo. The needs analysis aimed at the obtention of uh, a thorough SWOT analysis to describe the sea highways and uh, more, generally, more, more generally the routes between the Union and the Adriatic Sea. So I asked to um, Mr. Xerilai, which is the methodology, methodological approach followed um, for the realization of the needs analysis for cross-border accessibility? Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank you, everybody. I cannot believe it. We are at the end of the project, uh, and uh, I consider it a very good experience for the Institute, and we had a wonderful group working for this project. Uh, in this project, the Institute, for the first time, was uh, a VUP leader, and they had to do the analysis, uh, the, the need analysis for uh, the three parts. So I, I have made a short presentation to show the methodology and uh, some results of the project. Just a minute. So can you see me? Can you see the presentation? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. 
So, as I said, the Institute of Transport participated in all activities of ports uh, and was specifically the WUPI leader of WUPI T1, the international network of ports. And uh, as you said, we were responsible for the activity of the need analysis. Uh, a research was conducted to describe the existing roads between the Union Sea and the, Adi the Adriatic. The analysis took into account the stakeholder needs in order to improve cross-border accessibility and uh, their needs in terms of public investments and new skills required by the market. Uh, then the analysis investigated the possibility to switch to the transport of the modality to the, of the existing flows into more sustainable and efficient ones, taking in account uh, the place of origin and destination of goods and passengers. The methodology we uh, followed uh, was a practical one. We built a questionnaire. We had uh, various meetings with the stakeholders and uh, we did uh, a formal network. Uh, we selected uh, as a partnership with the feedback of the stakeholders the indicators. We conducted the survey and then we drafted the report. Uh, the first step uh, of uh, this analysis was real realized in two phases. Uh, the phase one was a discussion with the stakeholders on the problems they had in specific issues and areas in their activity. After we received their feedback and contribution, we drafted a questionnaire based on their feedback. Uh, uh, we decided to divide the questionnaire in two sections because we wanted the feedback from uh, private uh, stakeholders and also from the institutional bodies that uh, govern the uh, the operation of the ports. Uh, the private stakeholders uh, was divided in uh, six uh, fields for passengers, freight transport, infrastructure, logistic intermodality, digitalization, and cooperation with stakeholders. While the, uh, the government bodies had to uh, respond on legal and strategic support and legislation uh, in force or the need for new legislation. Uh, the first section contains eight fields and 12, 45 questions designed to obtain uh, information on physical and non-physical barriers to freight and passenger operator services, infrastructure, intermodality, information system, port organization, and cooperation with uh, interest parties. The second section of the questionnaire cont contains uh, two fields and 16 questions. It was designed to obtain information on the contribution of policymakers and decision makers in the development of maritime transport, the priorities, types of medium and long term programs where the strategy will focus and the step to be taken and addressed. Uh, based on the information received for, from the three ports, Kotor, Duras and Bari, uh, a total of 41 questionnaires were complete, completed and were sent to the various stakeholders in all three countries. Uh, the questionnaires were filled 76% uh, by hard copy and just 24% uh, were directly on the uh, survey, survey website with the, we proposed to them, which uh, made the question uh, look, uh, made the organization of taking all the questions a bit difficult, but uh, successful. Uh, we received 99% of uh, the question responses and uh, this campaign resulted in uh, 1,159 1, 1, responses for all parties. Uh, an, an important thing to say is that the questionnaire to be more practical was decided to be with alternatives, yes or no or with scales from one to five, because uh, it was difficult to have uh, written responses and uh, description ones. For example, uh, you can see uh, some questions for the passenger transport. Uh, as you see regarding the question, how would you consider passenger safety? The answer was 100% very important. We had uh, 14 answers. 
Uh, regarding the question, what are the reasons uh, you have chosen to be a customer or a port operator? Uh, dividing into categories we provided, like low tariff, good infrastructure, good logistics, other options, you can see the results in the graphics. We made uh, questions about intermodality logistics. Uh, all 90% uh, of ports uh, have uh, intermodal transport present in the port. They responded that they have it. Uh, we asked question for digital digitalization. And uh, are there any delays, which is an important bottleneck, non-physical barriers to the cargo due to border custom procedures? And uh, it's uh, important to say that 90% of uh, stakeholders said there are non-physical barriers, which is an issue that can be regulated quite easily, I think. After collecting all the questions, we realized a simple SWOT uh, analysis, uh, and we highlight the strengths, which all ports showed uh, good infrastructure. There is a good logistic operations going on in all three ports. There are links to the railways in all three ports, and uh, all ports meet the safety uh, requirements. The weakness is uh, most obvious one were the non-physical delays and bottlenecks by the customs. Um, the tariff levels of the three ports are still not very competitive for all the region. There are delays at the border for passengers, delays at the customs for freights. We saw this opportunity is uh, important one to highlight. There are uh, quite few, quite um, uh, important uh, existing long-term studies uh, on a logistic infrastructure for all three ports, all ports. There is an EU focus to support in intermodal development in Europe and in the regions. Uh, there are no other transport modes, especially for preference, so it is the most logical one. And there is a high local and national support for port development in Albania, Montenegro, and also in uh, South Italy. Uh, the threats uh, that we highlighted are the high political turnover and uh, the high costs, so there is not very much uh, financial support. After concluding the survey and analysis, we expect uh, that this study which was uh, submitted to all relevant parties, uh, might encourage the commitment or support of project uh, making political institutions. My encourage the fact uh, for drafting such strategies in support or, or facilitating transport chain procedures. Uh, we hope uh, that the institutions and the political decide the draft policies uh, for the development of freight and passenger transport between these three ports. Uh, we want, we expect the support um, for integrated cross-border regional development strategies. Uh, we expect that there is more transparency and comprehensive in strategy design and decision making. And uh, we highlight the possibility of stakeholders being more involved, involved in the strategic decision making. That's all for uh, for you, Paolo Flor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Florian. Thank you, Professor Gevori. Um, one of the most successful results of Project Port is undoubtedly the collaboration with uh, other partners in the, on, on the other side of uh, the Adriatic Union region. And uh, in this case, of course, with our Albanian partners, the Albanian Institution Transport, but also with another academic partner, which is the Faculty of Maritime Studies of the University of Montenegro. So we have today the, ple the pleasure to, to meet in this meeting, the rector of the university, of the university, Professor Danilo Nikolic. Good morning, Professor Nikolic. Good morning, Paolo. Good morning Thank to you. everybody. Uh, dear partners, colleagues, attendees, dear host, uh, uh, I'm glad to participate in today's final ports uh, project uh, event uh, for my team and myself. It was a pleasure to participate in the joint activities uh, with colleagues from Italy, Montenegro, Albania in promoting sustainable maritime routes in the program area. 
this project is a part of Interreg IPA uh, CBC Italy Albania Montenegro program intended to study the impact of new routes and motorways of the sea between Apulian, Montenegrin, and Albanian coasts, particularly between the ports of Taranto, Kotor, and Dures, and to analyze their socio-economic impact. In this sense, uh, the most relevant contribution of University of Montenegro and its Faculty of Maritime Studies from Kotor was to support decision-making by public-private uh, actors responsible when it comes to the development of maritime routes. The university also worked on the identification of the strategic relationship uh, between the factors that determine the overall logistic network design in relation to inter internationalization process. We have reached the goal and we are very proud of it. Uh, I would like to share a presentation with you, just a second. Uh, so, do you see the presentation? Yes, Professor, we see it. Okay, so I can uh, continue. Uh, I will, uh, let me refresh a little bit memory with some details about the University of Montenegro, uh, being uh, the oldest uh, public uh, and general university in Montenegro. Uh, we are the only public university in the country. Uh, Officially, uh, our university was founded on April 29, 1974, when several faculties emerged into university with the Faculty of Maritime Studies being one of them. Actually, the oldest faculty which forms our university is Faculty of Philosophy, which was established after the Second World War in 1947. The oldest engineering school uh, is Faculty uh, of Maritime Studies in Kotor, which is uh, established in uh, 1959. In 1975, university signed the first international bilateral agreement with Florida State uh, University uh, in Tallahassee, Florida. Now we have more than 130 uh, signed bilateral agreements with universities, most of them being from the uh, European Union. In 2004, it was large to turn point to our university. Up to then, each faculty was a legal entity. Since then, we integrated into the legal entity, one legal entity, and adopted Bologna Declaration at the same time. Still, faculties have some level of independence, uh, such uh, as uh, they have their own sub-account, uh, sub uh, they have ownership on development, uh, employment of young researchers, etc. Uh, next uh, significant turn point, uh, in our history was three years ago when uh, the new law on higher education was adopted uh, with the new law university made reorganization in number of study programs and faculties the law introduced uh, free of charge undergraduate and graduate programs for students at our university uh, in Montenegro we have three private universities and one public our university accounts for about 70 percent of student population and 90% of researchers in Montenegro as a country. Uh, today, our university uh, has uh, 19 faculties and three institutes. We have 63 uh, undergraduate uh, programs, a bachelor, uh, and, uh, bachelor of uh, Arts, Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Arts. Uh, we have 72 postgraduate programs and 25 doctoral programs. We have uh, about 20,000 students and uh, 70, uh, 700 employed uh, professors associates with over 500 external professors and associates from other universities. After outbreak of COVID pandemic in the previous semester, our classes went online. In this semester, starting from October, we organized combined classes mostly being online for faculties with large number of students and face-to-face -face for faculties with small number of students, such as art academies. For online classes, we use mostly Moodle platform and in less extent Zoom. We adopted the decision that uh, all final exams will be organized at faculty premises, while all kinds of pre-exam testing can be organized online. Management of the university went online. Senate meetings are partially organized at premises once per month with possibility to attend meeting via a Zoom platform. Daily activities are performed in the offices. 
In this period, some of our professors and students uh, were engaged in supporting the fight against COVID-19 through research and voluntary activities. From 2017 to this year, University of Montenegro uh, has been improving its participation in the internationally funded projects, mostly education and development of structural ones. Internationally financed projects in the period of last three years amounted to uh, almost 8 million euros, representing 78.2% of the total contract value of all projects for our university. In addition, uh, the yearly average share of income from international projects in three-year period was 8.2% of total university income. Under the 2014 to 2020 programming period, University of Montenegro uh, was participating in the following territorial cooperation programs. Interreg IPA CBC Italy Albania Montenegro program, Interreg IPA cross border cooperation program Croatia Bosnia Herzegovina Montenegro, Interreg MED program, Interreg Adri Adrian program, and Interreg Danube program. Uh, during the uh, last three uh, years, the University of Montenegro has participated in 21 European territorial cooperation projects with total contract value for the university of 2.7 million euros. Only five organizational units of the University of Montenegro have participated in interreg programs uh, during this period of last uh, three years. Among them, the largest number of value of projects was granted to the Institute of Marine Biology from Kotor, uh, representing 54% uh, of total uh, University of Montenegro value, followed by Faculty of Maritime Studies with 25%. Uh, maritime faculty, uh, faculty of Maritime Studies in Kotor, uh, as I said, uh, it's the oldest engineering uh, faculty uh, at University of Montenegro. Uh, there are four uh, undergraduate programs, bachelor programs, uh, there are two postgraduate programs and two doctoral uh, programs. Uh, just a second. Faculty of Maritime Studies is very successful in uh, project uh, applications in the uh, last three or four uh, years. Uh, Maritime Faculty Kotor received eight, uh, is uh, involved in eight applications uh, with a total value of 1.2 million euros. Uh, most of them being uh, Interreg uh, IPA, uh, Interreg uh, Adrian, and uh, Erasmus Plus uh, capacity building in uh, higher education. The project related to uh, the EU strategy for Adriatic and Union region, uh, which is a micro regional strategy adopted by the European Commission and endorsed by European Council in 2014. The strategy was jointly developed by the Commission and the Adriatic Union region countries and stakeholders, which agreed to work together on the areas of common interest for the benefit of each country and the whole region. The EU side covers nine countries, uh, four EU member states, including uh, uh, states and five non-EU countries. So the contribution of the program area of Italy, Albania, Montenegro and implementation of eu action was confirmed. At the beginning of the project implementation, we have to mention very important output for our university, and it is the signed adhesion form honorary members uh, with uh, IL, IL IS Association of Logistics and Sustainable Intermodality that we serve as a foundation for the future collaboration between academia and industry in the field of intermodal transport. Regarding work uh, packages, we made contributions and some of the deliverables with the uh, activities. For example, during VPT1, we have signed five memorandums of understanding and organized one promotional workshop. Also, we conducted the fulfillment of the questionnaires and kept contracts with the relevant stakeholders. Finally, we got our contribution to the concept of the final analysis. Regarding VAP, Working Package T2 and Working Package T3, we contributed to the implementation of the Ports Lab 
mathematical transport model and good practices detection and good practice transfer. Moreover, we completed our task for webinar lesson creation and the participation in program course. Together with the coordinator and partners, you organized and participated to the steering committee meetings, kickoff meetings, mid project meeting and other colloquia of the project importance. In this slide, you can see the photos of organized events at the Faculty of Maritime Studies in Koto. Moreover, we disseminated results to the national newspapers, prepared a video and a radio promotion of the ports project and shared our experiences at the online Zoom meetings. Finally, last but not least, we are proud of our collaboration with all project partners, and I give special attention to the lead partner, ITS Logistica Puglia, and their efforts for the project implementation. With them and colleagues from Polytechnic of Bari as the academic partner, we established Ports C Lab, Ports International Network, gained collaborative experience and effective communication that impact on the benefits to the university staff and students. Also, with the lead partner, we jointly started new project activities during this year within Interreg IPA and Erasmus Plus capacity building in higher education. Special thanks go to our associate partner from Montenegro, Port of Kotor, for their willingness to assist and help us uh, in the concrete steps in maritime connections between all three countries towards the ports project. That's all from my side. On behalf of University of Montenegro, I thank you for inviting me to this event and for the fruitful and uh, willing cooperation during the project implementation. Thank you for your attention and uh, I wish you all Merry Christmas and to stay healthy in 2021. Greetings from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nikolic. We hope and we intend to cooperate together in other projects uh, during the next programming period, uh, especially, of course, on maritime logistics and the capacity buildings, which are but capacity building, which are the two, which are two core activities that are naturally at the art of the work of ETS Logistica Puglia and so of course um, for your academic uh, entity like the one that you represent here. I catch the occasion to salute and greet and thank all the students from the University of Montenegro that are currently online following this meeting. Uh, we appreciate a lot in this uh, high degree of participation to this uh, event because it means that we finally reached even in this uh, particular condition that uh, that we share all uh, all around the world, uh, we opt we got to obtain uh, this participation, this dissemination capacity of the activities. So thank you once more for you and for the project team, um, Professor uh, Maya Skuric, uh, in particular, that uh, that can fruitfully cooperate with us. So, um, moving forward, I would like now to leave the floor to Marco Sebastio, which is the who is the communication manager of Programma Sviluppo, which was the partner that was in charge of the communication strategy of the project. So, uh, I would like to leave the floor to you to him now in order to have some some consideration about the work done. And Marco, the floor is yours now. It's a great honor for me to greet all of you on behalf of Programma Sviluppo in the context of the final event of Project Ports. Unfortunately, this is a virtual greet, a temporary compromise. This is a, a hard condition to bear, especially in consideration of our corporate philosophy. Those who have entirely been following the project surely we'll uh, remember how we started our work in the beautiful context of the Relay Isto in front of the Sea of Taranto and with a panel composed of high-level uh, representatives. Our 20-year-old experience in uh, learning and innovation with yachts, companies and other stakeholders made it difficult for us to work without the closeness of the people 
without the possibility of shaking hands. We promise to the fellow partners of project boards to come and meet one another as soon as possible. We will cooperate to build a future in our uh, respective territories, in Apulia, in Albania, in Montenegro. This is so because our cooperation is the last big result of our joint effort. No matter how difficult is the physical uh, distance, coronavirus pushed us uh, to experiment uh, new methods for remote cooperation that were uh, unusual for us until this time. Even without the presence of the CEO of Taranto, today we have many guests and high uh, valued contents in this meeting. The news and the pandemic is a paradox, uh, showed us how good, uh, good was uh, our project proposal. So good that it kicked us uh, busy in working on the previsional model on the logistic of goods and passengers, as well as uh, on high quality digital learning process, which in turn produced excellent to remote results. Uh, dear fellow partners, today we set the end of this project, but we will come back and meet uh, and uh, to shake again our hands and try to together again new good practices of innovation and international cooperation. Finally, I would like to uh, thank in particular Miss Iliana Inglese for the precious support that uh, gave us for the project uh, communication strategy. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Marco, for your intervention. We, of course, we share with the Programma Sviluppo the intention of uh, having a, a physical meeting when uh, all this terrible situation will finally come to, to an end. And um, I personally um, thank every project partners uh, that uh, exposed their uh, intervention today. Um, I would like to uh, remember, of course, that the needs analysis, the roundtables, and all the data collected during these activities uh, led to the realization of uh, an, another important pivotal output uh, uh, for the second work packages, which aims at uh, uh, obtaining a, a so-called mathematical transport model. Uh, this tool was useful for analyzing the data at uh, the disposal of the project partners and uh, for, for the prediction of future scenarios in which new C routes could be activated according to their performance and, and, key, and KPI key performance indicators uh, that were collected, uh, of course, during the project life cycle. In order to talk more precisely about the outcome of, of this activity, we invited today the team of the um, of uh, the Polytechnic University of uh, of Bari, and in particular, Professor Michele Ruta, which I think is at the moment uh, uh, busy with another project, interreg project meeting. So uh, we ask you to be patient, and we will postpone his intervention for the presentation uh, of the very output of this activity, in particular for the, the forecasting uh, functionality of their uh, mathematical transport model. So we will postpone this intervention uh, at the end of, uh, of, of the, um, the, next, the next intervention, which we will be reserved to Mrs. Lozacco. I would like just to remember to all the participants that uh, Oh, Professor Ruta is here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Professor Ruta. So, uh, thank you for being here amidst all the other project meetings and activities that uh, kept you busy, you and your and your team. I would like to ask you uh, how was the mathematical model produced during the project, and more precisely, how it is possible to have a forecast of future scenarios through the model that you put in place. Please, Professor, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Paolo. Uh, let me bring uh, uh, the best regards of our rector, Professor Francesco Cupertino, uh, which can be here today for other previous engagement. And uh, uh, so uh, I will go just to the, the response to your question by, uh, by means of uh, uh, the share of uh, a presentation. 
I have just prepared uh, a slide for a set of slides for you. Uh, okay, just a moment. Can you see my screen? Not yet, Professor. Okay, just a moment, please. are the inconvenience uh, to which we all are nowadays accustomed to in order to I think that uh, all the project partners here all the participants are uh, accustomed to zoom meetings and uh, online activities and uh, yes the show must go on of course so we'll just wait a second I don't know if Okay. Okay. I had to uh, exit and re-enter in order to uh, give permissions to share video to the application. The floor is yours, Professor. Can you, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes, we see your screen. Okay, your perfect. Screen. Okay, um, so uh, I'm responsible for the W WPT2 POSI lab and uh, today I will share with you some some remarks related to uh, the work of Polytechnic University of Paris in uh, uh, in this part of the project. Uh, this is the agenda of my talk uh, of my speech. Uh, I will uh, just give you some uh, uh, indication with respect to main outputs of uh, our work within the WPT2. Uh, and uh, in particular, we'll give some information related to the transport model with specific reference to the approach we have uh, followed and the IT platform we have realized. Uh, furthermore, I will give uh, um, just some remarks related to the model usage uh, with specific reference to basic elements of the model we uh, have adopted and uh, uh, the GPA extracting first and uh, the modality to, to query, to, uh, to give uh, information and uh, responses to the, to the model, by the model. Uh, finally, uh, just some sketch with, really, with specific reference to post data analysis. Okay, so uh, basically uh, the main output of our activity in the project is uh, the realization of a multimodal transport network chart with the specific purpose of obtaining a calculation of cost, performance, security, uh, time related to transport in a given uh, specific area. Um, the, 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 the original, the early objective we had was the, um, the realization of a simple, of a, a really easy data entry system in order to give uh, uh, the possibility to import, to insert and import data in a systematic way, uh, also including possible import from existing sources in standard formats. Furthermore, we have the possibility to give data annotation in order to give a more precise uh, information characteristics uh, and uh, to make information content as explicit as possible. And finally, uh, the system has the possibility to, uh, to give complex articulated queries in order to give complex responses. Uh, basically, we have realized a participatory uh, historical geographical information system in order to have uh, um, a distributed community of skilled and uh, um, motivated users 
uh, as uh, reference users. Um, we have the, the goal to direct the, as target to uh, decentralized organization, this model in order to keep uh, uh, high data quality also when the volume uh, of data increases. Um, so we have implemented a model, uh, um, uh, information system uh, exploiting that model, uh, which was uh, a model where temporal and spatial data uh, have uh, mm, uh, uh, a specific mm, possibility to be implemented. Furthermore, there is the possibility to annotate that data and to give articulated response by means of the uh, implementation of uh, uh, queries. Uh, in a more detailed uh, point of view, we have implemented um, uh, a model running on, uh, uh, on running on the OpenSea map, uh, which is uh, uh, an open data model uh, cartographic system uh, based on a specific customization of the uh, generic OpenSea map uh, approach. And furthermore, there is a, a also a, a tool. Uh, whose name is uh, uh, Java OpenStreetMap um, software, able to um, obtain a client server maritime historical geographic information system to provide information within the model and to obtain queries a response to the model itself. Basically, this is an open source uh, adaptation of uh, the original OpenStreetMap uh, project approach. Uh, where we have personalized and uh, customized, uh, customized the uh, project need and requirements uh, originally developed from uh, the, the project uh, working group. Basically, this is the um, platform architecture. As you can see, we have uh, uh, the open, open CMAP infrastructure with the, its uh, web application. Uh, the file server repository, uh, the database server, and uh, this infrastructure is managed by uh, the Polytech University of Paris um, as a general, uh, let's say, um, uh, administrator for that infrastructure. Furthermore, we have the communication with customized uh, Java OpenStreetMap Open editor, that is the clients, by means of an open VPN tunnel for obtaining secure and uh, uh, granted internet connection for every client uh, who would like to use our system. Uh, so basically, uh, the security is implemented by, because we have all data transfer by the virtual private network uh, tunnel uh, where the server, the file server, is in our private network in, within the information system laboratory of Polytechnic University of Bay, which is a uh, laboratory of mine. Uh, and this guarantees uh, confidentiality because we uh, can have data snooping and also integrity because also data tampering is avoided. Um, so in general, we can say that uh, basically no data, no uh, possibility of transmission of data to third party servers is allowed. And then this grants both confidentiality and integrity and in general security is, uh, is uh, 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 our uh, priority. Uh, the basic elements for our model are in general nodes and rules. Nodes are single georeferenced points um, where um, in general we can say that basically nodes are uh, CMARC or objects within a given area within a given special uh, extension. And also we can have our roots uh, also known as, uh, as ways, uh, which are sequences of nodes. Uh, and in particular, roots can be uh, intended as a um, physical object with a linear development uh, or paths, for example. <clears throat> for the moment, we have the second part of model elements, that is the shapes and tags. Tags, in particular, are attributes uh, attached to uh, objects. Let's say, for example, nodes, roots, or shape can be a specific label uh, consisting on uh, a name and a value 
allowing to give a, a, a strong dip to the information characteristic to the information feature in order to have uh, specific elements attached to the single object within the, uh, the area we have the, uh, the, the objective to, to uh, annotate. And in particular, we can uh, use tags in order to assign in a fully freely way, a fully free way, um, every information needed to uh, to feature in a more detailed way the uh, the single element within the within the area. Uh, basically, the Java OpenStream app uh, software adds automatically uh, the tags to every new node or to every modified node. Uh, and uh, to, sing, to a single label, it is attached a single timestamp in order to, pro, um, to perform also uh, time-based research, time-based queries to the systems. Um, finally, the shapes are close sequence of nodes, for example, the first and the last node inside. Uh, and uh, the shapes are uh, exploited in order to represent uh, um, physical object with uh, uh, a given extended um, uh, length and width and to define areas uh, characterized by uh, specific common attributes. Um, basically, there is a, a new feature uh, in, uh, in the system, uh, which is the feature related to the possibility to import uh, JPEG structs. And this is really important because uh, the data input is a, a really relevant feature for that system for those systems, because uh, we cannot have the we, we can have the possibility to import information by uh, the uh, uh, import of local JPEG struct files, or we can produce JPEG structs by exploiting GPS logger such as, for example, a uh, rugged device uh, installed uh, aboard the ship or uh, personal navigation systems or smartphones applications. Um, basically, uh, by exploiting the uh, Java OpenSIM app approach and the Java OpenSIM app software um, uh, user interface, we can upload the JPEG track in order to uh, uh, import a track created during uh, a navigation and in this way, can, we can get information on routes and travel times, for example, uh, related to a specific sea navigation. We can also insert JPEG tracks in order to uh, um, increase uh, the number of levels uh, within a given area uh, to be modeled. And finally, we can also color the tracks in order to, we can uh, use different colors uh, in the JPEG tracks in order to, uh, uh, to perform a specific um, uh, to, to evidence specific differences in, uh, uh, in given tracks with respect to uh, other ones. Um, basically, this is uh, the graphical user interface of our system. Uh, as you can see, basically, this is, uh, uh, let's say, this is, uh, uh, you know, the, the interface for querying the model. As you can see, we can, uh, we can specify several parameters in order to retrieve nodes or routes or, uh, from the information systems. And uh, in general, we have uh, the possibility to use for querying the system basic selection criteria, uh, such as, for example, the timestamp of the annotation uh, uh, or a timestamp range and uh, a root identifier, uh, a single root as uh, an, an ambiguous identifier in order to, uh, uh, let's say, to, uh, to track a specific um, part within within the map, within the same map. Um, the second screenshot I will share with you is uh, the querying uh, interface. Here you can see that we have the possibility to query by attributes uh, the, the model, the information system. And uh, in particular, we can query attributes associated to specific nodes, to specific paths and to use uh, names, uh, specific names, um, or um, we can specific also uh, given constraints uh, or reference values or, range, or ranges associated to uh, a single query. 
Um, also, complex queries can be uh, allowed by means of uh, uh, the exploitation of uh, uh, logical operators, such as, for example, and and or, and uh, we can combine uh, given attributes, such as, for example, velocity or uh, given flags or um, uh, given label, labels by uh, exploiting the and and or logical operators. Uh, this is done only and uh, uh, only uh, by the user interface. Finally, um, just some sketch related to the final data analysis uh, related to the exploitation of, uh, of our information system. As you can see in uh, uh, this picture, basically we can say that mm, the passenger traffic is uh, really um, prevalent in the Apulia, Albania, Montenegro maritime corridors. Um, and uh, uh, also we can say that vehicle transport uh, is probably the least relevant type of uh, uh, the monitored traffic. Uh, so this suggests that probably we have to uh, improve uh, the multimodality uh, of possible future transport solutions um, because they generally rely on uh, local transport services, uh, which should be uh, improved, which should be enhanced in the reference project areas, for example. Um, just another comparison, uh, um, as you can see in this, uh, 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 in this charts, uh, basically we have not a very homogeneous situation in the three reference areas uh, because uh, uh, with specific reference to uh, import-export uh, comparison in, uh, in the Apulia region, uh, the Apulia exhibits an opposite trend with the uh, export volumes uh, with respect to uh, the other regions, uh, uh, because the export volumes uh, are more or less three times larger than the import volume. And this is not uh, retrieved in the, in the uh, other areas, that is in the Albania and Montenegro uh, reference areas. Um, just last slide, um, with respect to the export from Albania um, and the other ports, uh, we have the concentration of traffic through main ports, uh, which is uh, the local apps for the maritime areas monitored by the project. And uh, we have that the, in Albania, just one port is uh, 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 the main uh, traffic hub for uh, considering the volume of <coughs> uh, experts uh, as uh, uh, in, in particular, it accounts uh, for there's, uh, the 58% of all the maritime export of the overall region uh, in Albania. Okay, that's all on my side. Uh, if you have some question, I will be happy to answer to you. Thank you very much, Professor Ruta, for your precious intervention, especially in explaining uh, which is the functioning and uh, and the uh, first outcomes of your of your scientific work. Uh, I just take uh, catch the occasion to remember to all the, uh, the the attendees of this meeting that all the project outputs are of public domain and are uh, shared through our project website, which I put in chat and uh, was address web address is uh, ports dot Italy dash Albania dash Montenegro dot EU. Uh, if you, as, uh, as Professor Ruta was uh, correctly stating, uh, uh, there are two, two principal parts, um, two principal functionality that are interesting in this model, which is uh, the, the, the analysis of the state of the art and also the possibility to uh, analyzing the data for future scenarios. So uh, the academic partners are at your disposal for answering to technical questions about the, the practical functioning. And uh, moving forward, I would like to, I again, I thank you all the uh, project partners for explaining the methodological and approach and the outcomes of the, of the project implementation. So I will leave the floor to Mrs. Aurora, uh, Aurora Marello Sacco, which is, uh, which was, which is actually is until
until the end of the project, which is set officially for uh, next Monday. Uh, the project officer on behalf of the managing authority of Dieter Albania Montenegro. So she will have the, the floor for final remarks about the project outcomes. Please, Mrs. Losako, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Lotolito. Uh, lead partner and project partners, I would like to thank, to warmly thank you for the invitation to uh, this event. I'm very happy to participate and it's, it's pride for me to be the officer of a well, well-managed project that has achieved uh, concrete results uh, for the territories uh, involved. The managing authority has already expressed positive appreciation uh, on the work carried out. Now, um, I have to give you some uh, anticipation on the next program, uh, which has uh, been structured in this uh, last year, and uh, it's going uh, to be written and submitted to the commission within next summer. Uh, I'll share my presentation. Uh, it's okay for you? Yes, we see it. Yes. Okay. Um, the new uh, program uh, is based on uh, uh, BOP. Uh, it is a cross-border orientation paper. What's uh, BOP? Uh, the cross-border orientation paper is a document uh, of the European Commission aimed at launching a discussion on the 2021-2027 IPA-CBC cooperation programs uh, with the participation, uh, participation of Italian regions, Albania and Montenegro. It's the result of a collective work by the Regio D1 with the support of other the uh, Regio services and uh, uh, European delegation in the region. It uh, doesn't represent the negotiation position of the commission, but uh, it destined to provide ideas, uh, options, uh, and orientations on the thematic focus uh, of uh, the future program. The uh, BOP identified uh, five priority objectives or uh, uh, policy of objectives uh, to be used to increase uh, thematic concentration in uh, the involved uh, territories. PO1 is a smarter Europe. Uh, the current conditions for cross-border innovation are challenging. However, links, uh, there is a, pot a potential to improve uh, the framework condition for innovation by promoting links between uh, research institutions and innovative businesses in the cross-border area. These links uh, need to be reinforced uh, through complementary projects dedicated to innovation in the three countries uh, in full with cross-border projects. Experiences and exchange of good, of good practice of the smart specialization strategy of Regione Puglia um, including a green and blue economy, agro-food and tourism might provide insight for the development of innovation ecosystems in the whole cross-border region. PO2, Greener Europe. Investment should be promoted in joint climate change adaptation and mitigation with a strong focus on sustainable and eco-friendly measures, particularly in areas where natural ecosystems, biodiversity and local economy are affected by consequences of climate change. Cooperation could be further consolidated through the development of joint policies protocols, procedures, and approaches on risk prevention and rapid response management. For example, in hydrogeological, seismic, phytosanitary, and wildfire. 
obstacle need to be overcome to achieve a higher degree of protection for the entire border area and population and to promptly respond to many potential emergency. PO3, more connected the Europe, uh, uh, your interest uh, <laughs> uh, item. The program could be used to tackle complex cross-border issues, uh, which require close and continued exchange, such as cross-border mobility services, uh, including ferry on, and other public transport. More specifically, for maritime transport, uh, operation under the program could foster cooperation for sustainable, sustainable development policy in port areas, deployment of green solution, improving port sustainability, support investment in enhancing the performance of the most frequently used ferry connection, address the issue of land sea connection and interland accessibility. In the field of uh, ICT, investment could be promoted in increased uh, di digitalization of the border region on the basis of a commonly agreed cross-border strategy and action plan, improving general condition for joint e-solution, developing the potential to improve connectivity and competitiveness of regions in supporting the ICT infrastructure, for example, Wi-Fi spots on municipal buildings, mainly in remote areas. PO4, the uh, more social Europe. The demographic trends in the region uh, show a continuous decline over recent years, mostly due, due to the aging and the net migration. High unemployment rates, uh, both on total active population and on youth in the main common concern, as it also generates negative side effects affecting social cohesion of the area. A cooperation program based on a sea border could focus on education and professional training to improve the competencies. Culture and tourism in economic development inclusion and social innovation uh, is a specific objective added only recently uh, due to the pandemic. COVID-19 crisis was seen as an opportunity for transformation to contribute to the economic development of areas relying heavily on the culture and tourism sectors and to the creation of resilient and sustainable jobs to provide access to the services in culture and tourism seeking a positive impact on integration of the private the local communities and to strengthen the environmental and financial sustainability and resilience of tourism and culture in the long term. ICO2 Safer Europe. Under uh, uh, this, uh, um, sorry, uh, PO5, PO, PO uh, sorry. <laughs> Under PO5, uh, intervention shall be based on integrated uh, place-based strategy, uh, identify integrated challenges and objectives based on the local needs, uh, developed with appropriate citizen involvement uh, and endorsed by the relevant urban, Olga, local and other territorial authorities of bodies. I should to safer Europe, Due to increased uh, rate of migrants and refugees trying to reach Croatia through the Adriatic route, including Albania and Montenegro, each program should consider the selection of a safer and more secure Europe uh, specific objective and to set up respective priorities and measures. ISO 21 governance. Cross-border cooperation is not limited to interreg program. 
actions uh, and the recommendations may be supported by using the program budget for improving uh, governance issues uh, as proposed in the ETC regulation. Among uh, others, important guiding uh, uh, principle for drawing a program are, uh, for example, coherence with uh, micro regional strategies and link to other strategies, the European, macro, national, and regional, for example, and link to other program uh, in the same territories, uh, for example, Greece, Italy, Adrian, Greece, uh, Greece Albania. The Puglia and Molise regions, together with the participating uh, states Albania and Montenegro, strongly support the continuation of the program in the current format, uh, with the same territories and partners currently involved. The geographical continuity and the cooperation teams uh, ensure efficient uh, capitalization processes, uh, and they are based on strong and effective partnership established uh, with the Staction for the first time in the 2014-2020 uh, period. As an IPC program, the Italy, Albanian, Montenegro program already facilitates alignment uh, with the administrative uh, practices of the European Union and the adoption of the acquis communautaire for pre-accession countries. What uh, has been done uh, until now? Uh, during this, uh, in the second and third uh, quarter of 2020, focused uh, partnership meeting, uh, uh, meetings for competent regional, uh, national, uh, authorities were organized, involving a few experts, public officers under the responsibility of the regional and national authorities concerned, and with the support of the uh, Joint Secretariat. Um, cap capitalization uh, meeting with 2014-2020 beneficiaries was organized too. On, uh, uh, on Oct uh, in October. Uh, during uh, these meetings, uh, uh, about uh, uh, 100 persons with different thematic uh, uh, expertise, expertise and background uh, expressed their opinion on the key needs of the program territories. A qualitative assessment of their opinion against uh, the current understanding deriving from the ongoing debate and professional version of the regulations uh, following trends emerged. A high number of partners agreed on a strong need for uh, PO1, smart, uh, Smarter U, uh, Europe, and uh, a PO4, uh, more social Europe. Promotion of the cultural heritage, uh, creativity and tourism were important topics, uh, which indeed may be covered horizontally in the future programming period. According to the participant, the socioeconomic challenges related to both the structural weakness of the territories and to the mid-term mid consequences of the COVID-19 crisis may be more effectively targeted together across national borders by the program. At the same time, within these two PO, POs, a lot of cooperation action, uh, such as training, capacity building, may lead to concrete results for the territories, especially in relation to the promotion of the cultural heritage and to support the support to sustainable tourism. Like in most interreg programs in Europe, PO2, Greener U Europe, showed also a high interest and need of cooperation. As the joint maritime environment and increased uh, natural man-made risk may only be effectively addressed together. Also in PO2, a focus on sustainable form of tourism emerged. PO3 
it's a problem. The fact that PO3 a more connected Europe was not mentioned as a priority for the majority of uh, participants is not due to the fact that to the lack of needs to improve the connectivity in the area. On the contrary, several participants stress that uh, connectivity is a precondition for any development and require wider investment, uh, which are limited in uh, co cooperation programs uh, such as ours. For uh, ISO 1 uh, governance uh, and ISO 2 security teams, uh, there is for sure a potential to develop coordination, cooperation action. But especially for ISO 2, uh, actors such as customs and ministries for interior use other tools to, co to cooperate rather than cooperation programs. This is for the POs, for specific objectives. Uh, the opinions are uh, the following. For PO1 smart, uh, Smarter Europe, most of the participants stress the importance to improve the framework condition for the development of small medium enterprise, building up on the 2014-2020 programming period results. At the same time, agrofood, blue economy sectors were also mentioned as a priority. For PO2 Greener Europe, uh, there is a more complex picture because the different environment aspects, uh, which cooperation mostly focus on, are all interconnected, such as, for example, the protection of the biodiversity of the sea and territories, and territories depending on waste man management, on circular economy, on water management, and on water sewage system management. More sustainable forms of tourism were also mentioned as a need. For PO3 more connected uh, Europe, most participants focused on the missing links to 10T hubs and uh, intermodality. With the limited program budget, no big port infrastructure or maritime carriers may be financed but certainly an improvement of the framework condition, conditions enabling or supporting further investments on the maritime transport systems. For PO4, more social Europe, many cooperation actions, actions mentioned by participants aimed at skill and capacity building on culture, creative and touristic sector. For ISO 1, the majority of activities mentioned was focused on the efficiency and the coordination of public administration and of public services to citizens and small and medium enterprise. Finally, uh, this is uh, a possible structure of uh, the program South Adriatic for the next 2021-2027 programming period. The name of uh, the, um, the program uh, will be uh, South Adriatic uh, instead of uh, Italy Albania Montenegro program uh, of uh, this programming period. The um, the uh, program South Adriatic uh, will have five priority axes, one smart, smarter U, two greener U, uh, two, three connected U, four social U, and the five priority axes will be ISO 1 uh, for governance. Uh, eight uh, specific uh, objectives uh, and uh, four cross-cutting axes, uh, one related to cultural heritage, tourism and creative industries, uh, one for ISO 2 security at borders, uh, one uh, for stressed uh, the um, di uh, digital agenda, and the last 
pre-accession pre assistance. Uh, this is all for my side. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Losacco. I now leave the floor to my colleague and coordinator of the EU Department of ETS, Anna Chiara, please. Thank you, Paolo, and uh, thank you, Mrs. Losacco, for uh, the presentation that was extremely interesting, but I think also very useful. I am sure that all the partners that are today here are uh, eager to start to work uh, on uh, this uh, new, let's say, South Adriatic uh, program. Uh, you provided us with uh, very, very interesting in, uh, insights regarding the new programming period and uh, uh, our minds are already working. So. <laughs> Uh, the, those were really interesting as, uh, as tips and uh, information in general regarding uh, the what we expect from uh, the the close uh, the close future uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, we all will build uh, uh, upon uh, what we achieved uh, through our reports project and uh, we hope that uh, uh, the outputs achieved and the results achieved will uh, represent a, a basis uh, to capitalize um, within uh, uh, the new South Adriatic uh, uh, program. Uh, I personally would like uh, to thank you for uh, the assistance, uh, not for your presence today, but for the assistance and the su support that you provided us uh, all over the last uh, uh, two years. Uh, all the partners know very well that uh, you were a very present project uh, officer uh, for uh, all of us uh, and uh, I uh, express my gratitude on behalf uh, of all the partnership to, to you in, in person. So, and of course, to all the program bodies, to the joint secretariat and to the managing authority uh, that uh, supported us uh, in every way. I think that uh, we are very close to the end of our uh, uh, project meeting today and I wish to thank all uh, the guests uh, and uh, of course all the partners uh, for being together in uh, this adventure which started in 2000 and, uh, uh, 18. Uh, I see the screen also the managing authority that is uh, still with us. Uh, thank you for uh, staying with us uh, until the very end of, uh, of the project. Uh, uh, we are very happy of, uh, of the meeting today, of what we achieved uh, so far, a bit uh, sad for, uh, for the end of the project, but uh, um, we, we built uh, uh, a strong partnership, a strong network that uh, will go beyond uh, this project and I should say also a strong uh, friendship with uh, all the people uh, that uh, took part uh, to our ports project being partner but also uh, stakeholders uh, who, who were involved and supported us in uh, uh, in a very very right kind of uh, of manners uh, so uh, once again, uh, uh, thank you to all of you. The control room told me that uh, we do not have uh, received uh, any uh, any specific uh, question. So I think that uh, the meeting can uh, can be closed. And uh, once again, uh, thanks uh, everybody for uh, being part of uh, this final event of our. Uh, Ports, uh, ports project. Uh, have, a, have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.